Alright then gang, so now we can register new users, we can log them in and we can log back out again. So all that's pretty good. But as a user on the application, there's currently no real way to know whether I'm logged in or not, except for maybe trying to re-register on the register screen and then getting back an error message saying there's already an active session. And that is not the most ideal way to find out whether you're logged in or not, right? So what I'd like to do then is actually go to the profile page within the dashboard group and output the currently authenticated user's email right here. So that when a user is logged in, they're going to be able to see this email from their dashboard profile. Now, remember, we can access the current user with the use user hook, which taps into the user context where the user state gets managed. So let's do that first of all by adding the user to the list of things we want to destructure from this hook right here. And then we could use a property on that that AppRank gives to us on a user session object called email, which is just the user's email that they registered with. So let's output that right here instead of this generic text inside curly braces. Now, this probably won't work when you try it out. And there's a reason for that, which I'm going to explain shortly. But first of all, let's just make sure. So I'm currently logged into this application right now because I just logged in before the start of this video. So I know that I'm logged in, right? So if I somehow go back to the profile page, I should see my user email, right? But currently from these login or register screens, there's no way to get back to the, pro uh, the profile page. So what I'm going to have to do is restart the app by shaking the phone and then choosing to reload it. Now, once I do that, I should still be logged in, right? So I could technically go to the profile page and well, that doesn't look good. So we get this error because we're trying to output the email from the user object, but it says here that that user object is null. But why is that? Because I thought it was logged in. And well, yeah, I'm technically logged in in the eyes of app, right? They still have an active session for me on the back end. However, on the front end, when we restarted the app, all of the state of the application was reset to the initial values. And the initial value of the user state within the user context is null, remember? And that state only ever gets updated to be a user object when we call the login function. But when we restart the app, well, we're not doing that. We don't do that automatically straight away. So the user state remains to be null. And that's why we get the error when we try to output the email property in the profile because the user is null. So then how do we get the currently active user session, if there is one, from AppRight so that we can apply the correct value to the user state when the application first starts? Well, all we have to do is use the get method like this on the account object because this get method reaches out to AppRight and it asks for the currently active session if there is one. If there's not an active session, then the response is going to be null. But if there is one, then we get that user session object back. And then we could just update the state inside this context to reflect that. OK, so when do we need to make this request for the initial user value then? Well, it needs to be right away when the application first loads. So we could embed this logic inside a use effect hook, which we can set up to fire just once when this component is first rendered. And remember, because this component wraps the entire application inside the root layout, it gets rendered right away when the app first loads. So let's make this use effect hook down here somewhere in the user context below all the other functions. And you also need to make sure you import that use effect hook as well from React. Now inside this, we pass a function as the first argument, which is the function that's going to fire when the application starts. And the second argument is going to be just an empty dependency array, which means this function is only ever going to run once when the components first gets rendered. So inside this function then is where we'd want to get the initial user session, right? However, I don't actually want to nest all of the logic directly within this function. And instead, I want to make another function up here somewhere, an async one called get initial user value to put all of the logic inside of. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to blow the use effect hook right now because we'll be adding more logic to it later in the course. And also, I want to keep everything modular and organized. All right, then. So now inside this function, we can just try getting the currently logged in user using the account.get method. So I'm going to wrap this in a try and catch block. So let's make that first of all do the catch down here. And that's going to catch any error if there is one. And what we'll do if there is an error is we'll just set the user to be null. And then inside the catch block, uh, inside the try block rather, we're going to say const response is equal to await 
and then we want to use the account object and then the get method on that then we just need to set the user to be whatever that response is the user session object all right and then down here inside use effect we can invoke this function so i'm going to copy that and paste it right here and invoke it Okay, so there's one more thing I want to do in this function, and that is to add a finally block to this try and catch. So the finally code block goes right at the end, and it's going to run after all the stuff above it, come what may. So if this works and there's no error, then it skips the error block, and it runs the finally block of code. Now, if there is an error, it runs that block first, and then it moves on to the finally block after it. All right, so inside here, I want to update a new bit of state. So let's actually make that little bit of state, first of all, up at the top. And this bit of state is going to be called auth checked, which we also need an update function for. And I'm going to call that set auth checked. Then we'll set that equal to use state, and we're going to pass in a false as the starting value. So then the job of this bit of state is just to be a flag. Basically, that means it's going to be false before the initial user value has been checked when the application first starts. And then inside that finally block we just made, we want to update that state using the set or checked function so that it becomes true, right? So now for that second between loading the app and getting a response back from app, right, for the initial user, the value of that state is going to be false. And that tells us that, look, we've not yet checked and received that initial authentication status of the user when they land on the app. But then after that second, when all of this kind of completes and we get a response from app, right, and we update the user state, then we set that all checked value to be true. And that tells us that we have checked the initial user value. So whatever that value is now, whether it's null or user object, that is the correct initial value. So... We might be using that auth check state later on to maybe delay the rendering of certain things in the application until we get that true initial user value. And for that reason, we're going to add the auth check value to the value prop down in the context provider, which means we'll be able to grab it using the hook we made earlier if we need it. Okay, cool. So now, hopefully, if we restart the app, we should see that email address on the profile page if we're logged in. So let me try this now by shaking the mobile and then choosing to restart the app. And when it's loaded, we just want to wait just a couple of seconds before we actually go to the profile page to make sure we've got that initial user value back from app, right? Because remember, it might take a second or two to get it and we're not actually using that auth check flag anywhere yet to delay the rendering, right? So just wait a couple of seconds. But then if you click on the profile link, you should see the logged in user email, which we do. Awesome. Now, if you still get an error on this page, it's probably either because you're not logged in or because you clicked on the profile link too quickly. Likewise, if we click on the log out button now to log us out, then we're going to see that error as well because when we log out, the user becomes null. And again, we're getting that error saying, look, the user is null, we can't access an email. Anyway, now we have that initial user value. In the next lesson, we're going to set up some route guards to protect pages like this profile page from unauthenticated users.